Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. On the agenda tonight, we have the Marcus King Band and this is going to be coming from 2017 and it's their performance of Rita is Gone from Jam in the Van and I love this premise of just setting up in a van and jamming out. So that's what we're going to have going on here. So let's get Marcus and the band up on screen and see how they get on. I'm just going to jump in here. This is one of those videos that I'll just watch till the end because there is so much going on here. And first of all, let's just give a massive shout out to Jam in the Van for the sound we've got going on here, considering they're playing in a van. The sound is spot on. What a great mix we've got. And the way that everything's just sitting in that mix is so spot on. Great drum sound, great vocal sound as well. And that's, you know, a lot to do with Marcus King and that insane voice that he's got, that bluesy, soulful voice. But then also the other instruments, the keys that are in there, there's so much headroom in this mix and just all those instruments are mixed so well. So hats off to Jam in the Van in the first place. But let's get into the music. Sometimes when I do videos and they're from a while ago, I go into the history a little bit about their performances, whereas this is 2017, the Marcus King Band are touring all the time and they're literally making history as they go. In the blues, you might get that classic kind of A minor and then a D minor seventh, E minor seventh progression. And then the whole, I mean, and you can change any key you want, but it's really similar progression all the time. But you can take all of those chords and totally throw them out the window because just when you think you know where Marcus King's going, he'll just change it up just really subtly, but he'll put in a change there that you don't expect to make it a little bit more progressive. You think that if this guy can play lead guitar, this is going to be a seriously big performance. And all you've got to do is look into the fact that they're actually signed to Warren Haynes' label. So you know that there's potentially something big that's about to go down. And there certainly is when we get into the video a little bit later on. And straight off the bat, like I said about the mix having that 
that headroom that is only possible because of the professionalism of the players and keeping their dynamics in check. Really starting out low here dynamically and the way that Marcus just throws in those chords and also in the intro there you saw the way that he's plucking the strings with his fingers, first finger, second finger, third finger, in order to get all of the chord to punch out at the same time. Because of course if you're strumming down on a chord you're going to hear each note in sequence, it's not going to give that bite, that all in one chord and that's what Marcus do is doing in the intro, just to give it a little bit of punch in there. Let's jump back into the video. I'm just going to stop it there. Classic example of that progression. The fact that it suddenly kicks into something that you're not expecting. Not a standard blues thing to actually go into a progression like this. And it's just such a great precursor for a solo. And that's exactly what's going to be coming up. But let's get back into it. Just breaking down that solo or just 
attempting to break it down because what Marcus is doing here, he's not just in standard pentatonics and blues scale, there's jazz in there as well. The way that he just dots that jazz in there is so cool. And also his technique, great legato technique, silky smooth transitions. Of course, let's not forget the band who are laying down the foundation for Marcus to solo over the top of, I mean, super tight in the background. But when Marcus goes into his solo, he's not just regurgitating the standard blues lines that you hear all the time. He's really putting so many sprinkles of jazz and it's just such a great mix, the way that he's doing it. And because of the progression in the background, because like I mentioned earlier, he's not sticking to those strict progressions. It means that he can take that lead somewhere a little bit different, take on a slightly different journey. Marcus plays lead guitar, sings and writes the material as well. So he knows exactly what he's doing and exactly where he's taking an audience. Another thing to mention about Marcus's technique in order to get that nice legato sound to his lead, and legato, if you don't know what it means, it's a long, smooth sound without any breaks. A staccato is the opposite of legato. So staccato means a short and abrupt sound. So if you struck a note on your guitar and suddenly stopped it and kept doing that on your guitar, it would be staccato. Whereas legato means you let the notes ring out and you get that smooth sound. Of course, Marcus is putting together legato runs here. So there's no breaks between the notes and he's just ascending up that fretboard and getting a really nice nice, long, smooth sound. Some players use alternate picking and economy picking for every note of a particular run. So it's quite an aggressive sound. What you'll find is that when you are alternate picking, every time you pick a note, it's like that note is jumping off the fretboard at your audience because it's being accentuated. Whereas legato runs with hammer-ons and pull-offs are much easier to listen to because they're smooth and they're not offensive. But for me, I just love the sound of legato and the way especially guys like Marcus can put it together because it's just so easy to listen to. Of course, the technique of getting it to sound like that, you've got to have great hammer ons and pull-offs in order to keep the sustain within the run because when you're alternate picking, you've got that luxury of hitting the string all the time so your sustain isn't dying. Whereas when you're playing more legato sections, your hammer ons and pull-offs are going to be your key to sustain. You've really got to make sure you make that string resonate when you've left it and when you're coming back onto the string because as soon as you strike a string, it's then like a ball rolling down a hill. It's getting quieter and quieter and it's running away from you all the time. So you have to hammer on and pull off and try and get that ball back to the top of the mountain and then it'll start rolling down again. And you're always fighting that battle. Whereas when you've got a player who's got great hammer-ons and pull-offs, they can play really long legato sections with hammer-ons and pull-offs and never need to actually pick the string because of what they're doing is all in the left hand. So it definitely pays to work on your hammer-ons and pull-offs and try to get them the same volume as a pick because it means that you can start putting together some really cool smooth lines. Of course in guitar the opposite is always true as well. You want to work on your alternate picking so that you can synchronize your technical runs with the left hand that you might be doing legato. You want to have the option of making those more aggressive with the right hand as well and Marcus is one of those players that is absolutely top notch so he will have that ability to alternate pick and economy pick as well if he wants that aggressive sound. So everything is absolutely top notch and and those really subtle details I always point out about dynamics and taking you on a journey. I'm just going to show you as an example, I'm going to take it back pretty much um, to the beginning to just have a quick listen to how the dynamics change throughout the piece. So just have a quick snapshot of this. Listen to that really cool slow groove they've got at the beginning of the track that you can just relax into that just really sets the scene for Marcus's vocal to come in. And then let's take it towards the end of the track and just after the solo to get a vibe of where the track then goes journey-wise. <laughs> So there, 
you know, six minutes in, or, well, this video doesn't start right at the beginning of the track, but just a little bit further into the song, we've got a total different dynamic. We've got the drummers now going for it, the brass is really opening up, and Marcus is letting rip on his guitar, the tempo has been pushed. You know, we have seriously gone up in tempo here, and that's all about the journey, and this is one of those things that you can see a new band that come onto the scene nowadays, and there's so many details that bands miss out on such as dynamics and the journey so when you see a new band coming onto the scene that are this good and Marcus King especially as a player and a singer and a writer and he's got all those elements down he's writing into the composition dynamics and this is something that a lot of players and songwriters miss out. They don't realize the importance of writing a journey into a track. And that was actually a great point to jump into because we got an appreciation there of Marcus's legato in his solo, but also, like I mentioned, that alternate picking that he's got the ability to do. So he can make all of those notes pop out if he wants them to, which he did just at the top end of the run that he was playing. So it's really cool to see all of these techniques thrown together. I say this all the time about players who can get techniques down on a fretboard but they can't make you feel anything about what they're doing you might watch them and think oh well that's good it sounds good and it looks good it looks like you're doing something really complicated but it doesn't connect with an audience whereas the top players do exactly the same techniques but they elicit an emotional response from the people who are hearing it and watching it because it's connecting on a deeper level we've seen it a million times where players have got top technical ability and they're playing a million notes a second but then they can't connect with an audience you can be watching them and say oh well that's great it's technically impressive it must have taken a long time to be able to do that but it doesn't make me feel anything and that's the difference between the top players the great players and the good players the good players get down all the technique but then they can't express they can't emote through the guitar they can't make the guitar sing with the technique that they've learned whereas the top players can and the difference is that when you're learning a technique to begin with, you'll always learn it at one dynamic level. Every note will sound the same volume as every other note. So you'll get it down to that point. And that's what a lot of technical players will do is they'll think, right, got that technique down, next technique. The top players learn all the techniques but then apply dynamics to the techniques. They're constantly changing the voice, the volume of the voice, because the guitar is like a singer. And when a singer is whispering, it is totally different when they're belting out in chest voice in your face. And that's what the players can do with the most difficult techniques. They can put dynamics into it so that it's still a voice. And that's what a lot of players miss out on. But I don't want this video to go on for too long. It could go on for about a year because there's so many great elements in this performance, but also the composition, the way Marcus has put this together. So check out the Marcus King Band if you get a chance because it is top-notch stuff. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!